Well, g'day throttlers, welcome back to the channel. I'm up here on the beautiful Lake Macquarie. This is Warner's Bay, and I'm taking you to meet one of Australia's best and coolest motorcycle custom builders. Let's go. Well, good day, throttlers. I'm here near Warners Bay on the, would you say this is the mid-north coast? Yeah. North coast, New South Wales. Pretty much. I'm with Liam Butler from Butler's Customs, and this is a bloke that I've wanted to sit down with for quite some time. I've admired his work for a number of years. He started a new YouTube channel recently, so check that out. All Thank the you. details will be below. But Liam, thanks for coming on the show, mate. Thanks, I for, really appreciate thanks for having it. me, mate. Um, Custom motorcycling. Let's go back to where you started in the motorcycle game. Yep. Uh, what was your first bike as a kid? Oh, mate. So I personally didn't have many bikes growing up, but my dad and my pop always had old Yamahas, so old DT 175s and stuff like that. Um, so I was always on the back of them. Um, and I didn't get my first bike until I was about oh, late 20s, just for financial reasons. Um, and which was a Suzuki GN250. Mm -hmm. And I basically just bought that bike when I, I got made redundant out of the mines. And the wife said, oh, why don't you put some pictures up of your bill while you're doing it? And sure enough, that night I booked in four jobs and then it snowballed. Incredible. And, and here I am. Incredible. So you've done, how many bikes would you have done so far? Holy shit. In 10 years, I reckon I've done like full custom builds, you mean? Yep. Yep. Easy easy 60 to 70 i reckon wow and obviously out of that 60 to 70 there may have been some standouts so yeah, what, what a, a sure. couple of your big standouts um so there i did a honda cb 754 uh that that was like a burgundy color that was probably the first favorite of all because that bike come to me from the uk right and i had a guy luke just turn up to my shop one day and said i'm on holidays um, I've got this bike, I'm going to send it over to you. And I just thought at the time I was kind of, it was my, I was in my first biz shop and I thought this is never going to happen, this is mm. too good to be true. And sure enough, one, like a week later, a truck pulls up out the front with a big timber box on the back and yeah. I get the phone call, hey, you should have a bike out the front. And I, he, same thing, I had free reign with that bike. First probably build, I had free reign to do what I wanted and endless budget. So everything was handmade and that basically got into five different magazines. It was shared wow. all over the internet. So that was my first one, and my second one is the one behind us, which is a um, Yamaha XS650. Again, all handmade. I had free reign with that bike, endless budget. So they're probably my two favourites, but I, all of them are my favourites, to be honest. But they're my standouts. But I just you can't have a favourite child, can you? Correct. So you can't have a favourite build. You got it. Yeah, you got it. So that's yeah, they're my favourites by far. But they're all my favourites at heart. Very good. So also from where we're sitting here, and I can't show you on camera, but there's. An F-150? Uh, F-100. F-100 yep. sitting out the front. 81 model. That I'll, I'll flash up some photos of, but that is a wicked truck. Thank you. Yeah, so I bought that truck for about four grand on the side of the road. Really? And then I brought it back and realised that it was completely fucked. Every inch of it was rusted out. Yep. So I ended up getting another cab, which turned out to be not much better. Um, and originally I was just going to paint the cab white and or paint the body white. And then I just did what I did and got carried away and thought, I need to show myself what I could do with a truck like this. So $50,000 later, I handmade every, wow. handmade every panel for it and uh, every single nut and bolt's brand new. So, yeah. Incredible. Pretty proud of that one. There's a pretty talented fella sitting in this shed. Thanks, mate. It's not me. I don't think so. But <laughs> <laughs> the truck's incredible. How long have you been building cars for? I started, I started building cars when I was 13. Um, my grandfather, I learnt to drive when I was literally five. Um, my pop, actually, his son got his licence, and the day we got his licence when he was 17, he said, Dad, can I take the car for a drive? Yep. And he wrapped it around a pole and died. Oh, no. So my pop had this thing where I had to be the best driver right. on the planet. So as I said, I started driving when I was five, and he would take me out into a paddock, uh, sorry, on, out the back of a, a park and an oval, I guess you'd call it, and there was trees everywhere, and he would strapped 
a piece of wood to the pedal so I could reach and sat me on a thing and said, off you go, don't hit a tree. Yep. So that's where the love of cars came from because I just, and at any time I'd see him, he was working on cars. So my first car when I was 13 was a Morris 1100. Yeah, right. I dragged it out of a friend's backyard, started restoring it, got it half done, and then my pop got cancer, so he couldn't help me anymore. And, right. Um, so I sort of, we pulled the pin on it. So I'd done a million cars over the years um, and then led into my first bike as I said, which was when I, yeah, what, 10 years ago now? Yeah. So you, so essentially all the skills that you've had were honed on cars. 100%. And then you could apply, them, apply them to your bikes. Yeah, and I, over the years I've worked for companies building fire trucks, police cars, army vehicles. I've, I've worked on everything. So I've sort of learnt different skills along the way, working with my hands and multiple jobs. I went uh, to be an auto electrician and then they found out what I could do with my hands and then all of a sudden I'm not doing auto electrics anymore and I'm building stuff for them. You know, so that's where the love of working with my hands came from. It's an incredible art. I, I'm someone who doesn't create anything with my hands. I'm not good at it. I'd love to learn, but I've never had the opportunity. So yeah. I, I admire it so much. It's a, it's a skill that I think is a dying skill. Yeah, which uh, with, the, with, the, with the future generations. Yep. Uh, but certainly a skill that you know that, that you embrace, and it's great. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me is I find a lot of people nowadays will call themselves a builder, and and they are, but not my kind of builder I guess um, and how I'd like to do things where they'll just buy things and bolt them on and that's still building a bike that'd be me <laughs> it's, still, <laughs> it's still building a bike yep. don't get me wrong like yep. you get the same end result but I just for my own personal benefit just love to make things by hand because I, I know that I'm the only one that's got that particular part absolutely you know? and you can buy things online but they never end up fitting anyway so yep. I figure if I make it it's going to fit the first time yep. it's going to have that I guess look to it that has been handmade and yeah it might not be laser cut and have perfect edges but i kind of like that feel to it absolutely because you know, i can tell the difference between that bike that's everything's laser cut or that one that someone's made by hand so yeah that's where my love comes from I, I've, I've been a harley guy and i've seen the catalog of every yep. bolt-on product you can get but there's nothing bolt-on on that that's incredible we're no, going to have a closer look at the bike in just a moment so so don't go away just yet um, so tell me about Butler Customs. Yep. Um, so you had a workshop for many years, yeah, but, yeah. but you've downsized to give more to your customers? Basically, that's exactly right. So I had shops for nine years, um, 10 years in business this year. Um, and I just literally, like a few months back, just decided, why am I spending $50,000 a year on rent for other people when I need to turn out, say, 10, 12 bikes at a time? my customers are losing out because, yeah, they're getting a good quality product and I always treat everyone's, whether it's a $500 job or $50,000 job, the same. I just wasn't in the right headspace because I'm too busy running around like a chook with its head cut off. Yeah. So I thought, instead of giving 50 grand a year away, I'm going to go back to working from home, which is how I started mm -hmm. for a year and a half. Um, and I guess in the beginning, you get this idea in your head, I've got to have a shop to be taken serious. And I did it and it was awesome and I met some amazing people and had some great experiences, but... As I said, I just realized why give away that money when I don't need to. And now I'm at home. My biggest thing was I'm going to focus on my YouTube channel and take my time without having people walk in and chat to me for four hours and then I've got to go, where am I up to? Mm -hmm. I can pull the roller door down and I can give 50 times better quality because all my attention is on one build at a time. So yep. that's how the business is structured now. So it's basically I'll call you when I finish the, the build that I'm on. When I'm finished it, you're it. There's no one else in here except for that one job. Mm -hmm. All my attention and focus is on that. And therefore, I could spend 20 hours on a something that I'm only charging you three hours for, but I can spend that 20 hours knowing that I don't have overheads. Yep. So it's not affecting me. I'm not under the pump to pay bills. I can give you way better quality, which is what I've done here with that first bike out of our shed. Yeah. Very cool. So, so we're going to have a look at a couple of very, very cool bikes sitting around the space here. But before um, we do that, just tell us about Butler's Customs yep. and where you're heading in the future with it. Cool. So my business is basically, I just try and build one-off customs. So, and I, and I don't have a preference. I'm not like a Harley guy or a Triumph guy or whatever. I just love to build something that's really unique that I've never, ever seen before. And that is my goal. So... We're sort of trying to push the go down the lines of obviously focusing on our YouTube channel, um, but doing builds for, for companies and stuff like that because it gives me that opportunity to use their brand and really challenge myself on colours and styles and but also use and incorporate their products from mm. their brand, but tastefully so it's timeless. And that's my biggest thing is trying to create these one-off builds that 
can go in your shed and you can pull them out in 50 years time and people will go Fuck, did you just build that bike yeah you know not yeah. oh that's from the 80s I, I remember seeing that style in the 80s you know so yeah. that's where we're sort of trying to take the the business now and um we're getting there we're working hard to make it happen and it's my wife and myself as well like i'm she's behind the scenes doing all our youtube and stuff and she's on the tools with me as well but she wow. just doesn't like to be on camera yep but she helped me build the truck outside which you'll see later um, she did 99% of the body work on it. I just mm -hmm. painted it. Um, but, yeah, so she, she's very talented as well, but she just doesn't like to be on, on camera. Fair enough. Takes a team to build an empire, it mate. It certainly does. Absolutely. Um, so the bike came to me literally as a frame with a motor in it, not running, no electrics, no nothing. Uh, and the customer said to me, well, can you get it wired up and make sure it's got sparks? So I did that, and then he realised how quick I could get it done, and he said, well, how far can we go with this? What... What would you do to this bike uh, if it was yours? And I said, well, it depends on what your budget is. And he basically said, let's pretend there is no budget. And I went, well, the mine's ticking over now. So I said, I wanted to do something like this for ages, all handmade. I don't want to buy any parts if I can help it. And that's what I've done. So, um, yeah, there's about $3,500 worth of brass and there's about three grand worth of chrome on it. Um, everything's handmade. So the exhaust system, it's all mandrel bent. Um, the sissy bar is all done on a massive power hammer. The fenders are all handmade. The seat, there's about 45 hours in that seat, and that lifts up with your electrics underneath the seat How many there. hours in the seat? About 45 hours. Holy moly. Yep, and then this is a leaf spring off a trailer. Um, there's a lid that goes on here, obviously. All this is handmade, bead rolled. Um, the tank's fully handmade. Um, the bars... All of these are turned up, all of this um, has been modified. Um, and I wanted a real art deco look, so I've gone with like, I've rounded every, all my edges off. I didn't want any sharp, pointy edges on this bike at all, so that's where that idea came from. And you've got all the mini indicators mounted on the front forks here. I just wanted everything minimalistic and clean and tidy, but I also kind of wanted that 70s vibe going with the, the twin headlights, so. Um, but the curves on the tank, funnily enough, came from this one part of the frame, which, so this is a standard section of the frame, and I saw that and I thought, well, that's a nice Art Deco sort of rounded off edge, so when I made this tank, I gave it that rounded line, and then obviously it was the same with the seat, and my idea of this when I was looking at it side on with the exhaust flowing out the back was, imagine if this thing was in a wind tunnel, and the wind's blowing down, it comes down, kicks up off the seat and then rolls out the back so that was why I've got the lines that I've got um, yeah and when I pulled it all back to bare metal the frame actually had cracks in it so I ended up having to remake three quarters of the frame from here back and I bead rolled all the diamonds into the bottom here um, and bead rolled all this and um, yeah everything on its handmade so I'm pretty proud of this thing I put a lot of time and effort into it, it took me about six months between jobs and moving shop but um, She's finally done. It's absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. And the colour combinations as well is just... Yeah, well, that was a big thing too. It's always it's so important to pick the right colour that's going to make the brass pop. Um, and originally it was going to be all bare metal, but I chose to, to paint it for the simple fact that I really wanted the brass to pop. Um, and just the details, like using these braided wire and stuff just to keep it that vintage sort of look. Um, hid as much as I could, hid underneath has actually got all the master cylinder for the for the rear brakes because we went we wanted to go with a hydraulic rear brake and a drum front brake um so i've tried to hide as much as i can under the bike and this is what we've come up with well how cool was liam butler what a nice fella and that yamaha chopper that was there absolutely incredible the brass work the craftsmanship everything handmade on there was just well that's what dreams are made of. I certainly don't have those sort of skills. I'm glad there's people like Liam still in the world that's creating these awesome things by hand. Anyway, that's about it for this episode, folks. Throttle on, stay safe, and I'll see you down the road.